we're going to go to the people that have come more than 150 miles. i got to find that on the sheet. Where is it? <coughs> this one. And we'll start with uh, Jim. I think it's Gerstein. Gerst yeah. Gerstein. So please, please, pr uh, uh, I apologize up front. That's Remember, right. I have a name that often gets mutilated, so it's not intentional in any way. And we are going to run the three-minute clock when you're ready. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jim Gerritsen. My family and I grow Maine certified seed potatoes in Aroostook County. I'm here to testify in opposition to LD 146. We are adamantly opposed to the weakening of Maine's mining regulations. We have been farming for 39 years in the unorganized territory of central Aroostook County. Our isolated seed farm is located 40 miles southeast of Bald Mountain. In our 36-mile township, Township D, Range 2, there are eight residents. Six of them reside, uh, are in our family. In the summer, after planting is done, it's become a tradition for our sons to go camping. Where they go is Maine's Dabuli Public Reserve, right next door to Bald Mountain. They go with their friends from Bridgewater, Blaine, Mars Hill, and Monticello. All these young men live and work in Maine's outdoors. They would be here testifying today against LD 146 if they weren't home moving snow, shipping potatoes, and volunteering for the local uh, Mars Hill Snowmobile Club as volunteer groomers. These boys know every road between our farm and Bald Mountain. You as members of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee and we as Maine farmers, we share a common responsibility. It's all of our jobs to protect Maine's land and to make sure it continues as an undiminished asset for future generations to work and enjoy. That's why we oppose LD 146. Weakening existing mining regulations is bad policy. It will hurt everyone in Maine. Our priority must always be protecting Maine's environment. To be successful and to continue to be a great place to live and a great state to visit, Maine must maintain very strict limits on groundwater pollution. Because of high sulfur and arsenic levels, unearthing Maine sulfide deposits by mining is a predictable future catastrophe. Maine's increasingly wet climate increases the likelihood of disaster um, from acid mine drainage. Every Mainer should be alarmed when a company from out of state exerts pressure on weakening Maine mining regulations which would ensure the protection of Maine's environment. And Senator Saviello asked for some specifics and I want to list three. So uh, let me ask you this question. Yes. Can you ask us, give us the specifics? Yes. Thank you. Go. Okay, thank you. Um, one, I think we need to increase, not decrease, but increase the protection of Maine's groundwater. Two, I don't think that we want to allow mines next to Maine public lands. And three, I think that you need to require 100% bonding be posted by a mining company before the permitting of a mine so that the cleanup will be completed within 10 years and you cannot let Maine taxpayers become saddled with the expenses uh, borne by the corporation that is doing this mining and gain, uh, having the gain from that. You can't put all the costs onto the uh, Maine taxpayers like we've done at the Callahan mine. So Maine uh, taxpayers cannot afford uh, another corporate bailout like the Callahan mine in Brooksville. The recent Mount Pauly mine disaster in British Columbia illustrates that modern mining remains flawed and environmental costs are high and unacceptable. The Maine legislature acted accordingly, uh, correcting. The Maine legislature acted correctly last year when it overwhelmingly defeated this same proposal. I urge your committee to lead by example and to defeat LD 146, and I'm happy to answer any further questions. Questions. Thank you. Thank you for uh, specifics. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? None? Thank you. We, we'll check you off, so that'll be our sign up sheet. Randall Agrella. Randall Agrella? Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, 
I am definitely opposed to uh, LD146. My concern is primarily around um, whether it addresses uh, adequate uh, protections to the environment. Um, it's my belief that, if anything, the existing rules should be strengthened, not weakened. My reasoning is simple and not very profound. Mining is a particularly dirty industry, even as it's practiced today, and the environmental costs tend to be very high. Developing Maine's mostly rather marginal mineral resources will create a few jobs in the short run, but the aftermath of mining operations is usually uh, very long-lived. Without strengthening the requirements for mining companies to perform meaningful remediation and cleanup, the environmental damage is apt to be severe, even catastrophic. Uh, Maine's experience with the Callahan mine in Brooksville should, not, should be instructive and is now one of the most heavily polluted locations in Maine. LD-146 goes 180 degrees in the wrong direction, in my opinion. Uh, the rules as proposed make it even easier for companies to plunder Maine's mineral res resources and move on, leaving the burden of setting things right to present and future generations of Mainers. The legislature, in my opinion, had it right in the last session when they killed a similar proposal, and I urge you to uh, do the same thing. Thank you. Questions? Huh? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you for coming down. Bish, uh, Betsy Bishop Terrell? Terrell? Terrell. Hi. Hi. Welcome. You ready? Thank you. Um, I am definitely opposed to LD-146. Senator Saviello, Representative Joan Welsh, and members of the Joint Standing Committee on the Environment and Natural Resources. My name is Betsy Bishop Terrell. I'm here today representing Car Pond and it is surrounding waters. My family has owned property on these shores since the early 1900s, 1902 to be specific. This area has a special place in my heart, so I'm here doing my part for the to stand in opposition to the proposed metallic mining rules LD146. I have actively watched the main mining re uh, revisions process since the beginning. I wrote letters and spoke at previous public hearings to testify against these flawed rules. Over this period of time, I have thankfully witnessed overwhelming opposition to the flawed revisions, and unfortunately witnessed mining industry representatives advise and amend these laws with only their needs in mind and not the long-term effects they would have on the environment. The proposed rules in LD146 are written to relax the current rules only to cater to metallic mineral mining industry. Maine needs strong <coughs> rules to protect our wa water and our wildlife habitat. How can the environment be protected when the proposed rules allow mines that are so dangerous they require wastewater treatment forever, don't require mining companies to pay enough money up front to clean the, up the environment, environmental catastrophe? allows unlimited contamination of groundwater under mining areas that could encompass thousands of acres of land, allow mining close to and underneath Maine's public lands, including lands for Maine's future lands. Some of Maine's most outstanding natural features and secluded locations are found on Maine public lands. These rules open, uh, allow open pit mines next to Maine's lakes and rivers, this relaxes the buffer from one mile to one quarter mile of uh, land set aside for future generations. Why would anyone concerned uh, for the environment till future of Maine support a rule that would provide the mining industry with a 30-year post-closure period? Perpetual treatment of wet waste should not be allowed. What taxpayer would allow a rule that would turn the cost of the maintenance of wet mine waste units over to the taxpayer? The relaxed mining rules of LD146 allow mining in areas that are extremely dangerous for the environment if they were mined. If these rules in LD146 are approved, it will only encourage mining companies to come into Maine and take advantage of Maine's water and natural resources. Maine's natural resources are what draws people to live, work, and visit in this great state. Its diverse habitats and clean water are essential to Maine's fish and wildlife and the people who make their living from it. The health of our next generation depends on sustainable natural resources in a clean environment. 
Maine depends on tourists that come to visit and expect to see Maine the way life should be. If you remember only one thing, you must be accountable for your actions and conscious. It's not too late to start over and prevent these flawed rules from becoming law and harming our environment. When your grandchildren ask you what you did to protect Maine's land, water, and air, what will you tell them? I hope you'll be proud as history will reflect the decisions made here today. I strongly urge you to reject LD146. Um, and I would um, like to have you ask me questions about my pictures. And um, uh, thank you very much. Do, do you tell us where you caught the trout? Uh, uh, car are you a true Mainer and that's somewhere up there? <laughs> um, these pictures are, are all taken within two miles of Bald Mountain, except for two pictures which are taken within five miles of Bald Mountain, which would be the ones that um, are on Fish River. Um, the Canada Lynx is on Fish River. Um, the Golden Eagle is right above our camp. The loons and the moose and, and the otter and the, the large group of mergansers all at Carpon. Um, the salmon and the lake trout and the little baby fishies are all from Carpon. And um, if you look at that, there's, there's Fish River Falls zooming right through um, up the chain of Fish River Lake. And um, there's the two springs that um, people use to drink. Um, within two miles of Bald Mountain, so there's drinking water right there. And the waters that flow from this affected proposed mining site, which would be Bald Mountain, are um, <coughs> feeds um, the old growth cedar, which you can see my husband has his arms around, he can't even put his arms around it, okay, are within a, within a mile of Bald Mountain, and um, it, it feeds um, into Car Pond and into a double A AA water quality area and um, into Carpon and into Fish River. Representative Duchesne. Thank you, Senator, and thank you very much for the photos because I have birded and looked for birds on the other side of Route 11 a lot, but never on your side, and you've convinced me. You're <laughs> welcome to, to come and visit anytime. <laughs> Isn't that so? They got brown birds there. That's right. <laughs> uh, I have one question. You handed out this to, do you want to tell um, us what that is? Yes, that is a petition to ban uh, metallic mining in Maine, and it's something that my husband Craig has put together and has over 600 signatures that are from all around the world and many of them from Maine. And um, he just got it started on it, so I'm hoping that this is you know, something that's going to go viral. Yes. Representative Welsh. I have the committee's permission, even though I presented yeah, that, the bill. Right. <laughs> yeah. She presented the bill. Normally, wouldn't do that, but I feel in this case, she was just getting it on the table. Just, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, this is an impressive list. And were all these people visiting then in your area? Were they visiting? Or, How did you get oh, the names? Um, a variety of contacts from um, contacting things like Audubon and Trout Unlimited and um, just, you know, a network of connections that had some relative to... People who are interested in coming Protecting the environment, and, protecting yeah, Maine, yeah. yes. Good. So that's a good economic uh, survey here of people who are interested. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Representative Campbell. Not a question, but thank you very much. It's a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Mr. Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald. Excuse me, I have to go to taxation for the town of Jay, so I'll be back. Hello, Mr. Fitzgerald. Welcome. Not sure how I got on the list for being 150 miles away. I live 10 miles down the road, but uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always said sign here, so I apologize. You just went for it. You're an Candy. opportunist. <laughs> Strike while the iron's hot, I suppose. But um, my name is Larry Fitzgerald. I live in Winthrop. I'm a Maine certified geologist a former metallic mineral exploration geologist for J.S. Cummings and Naranda Exploration. I was part of a uh, small economy of a few hundred exploration geologists that were working in, working in Maine in the 1980s that were essentially uh, legislated out of existence by the state of Maine. I went through a period of unemployment, uh, which I've turned around. Today I manage an environmental assessment and remediation group for TRC Environmental, a firm with 300 scientists, engineers, and support personnel here in Maine. 
I've conducted or directed the assessment and remediation of hundreds of contaminated sites in the Northeast and beyond, including work, working on legacy environmental issues from several mining sites and 21 federal Superfund sites. The U.S., as well as the people of Maine, require metallic minerals for everyday life because they are vital to our ability to live and work. Currently, Maine is 100 percent dependent on others to provide these metals. Many of these metals are currently mined in third world countries by children at the point of a gun to fund some warlord. Most states in the U.S. do not have the right type of geology for metallic minerals. However, Maine does. We are a small subset. The provisional Chapter 200 rules, while an improvement over prior versions, still present a very high bar for any proposed mining in Maine. There is an inherent bias in these rules to mining in deference to other types of permitted projects, such as hazardous waste facilities, solid waste landfills, and rock quarries, none of, none of which are held to anything like the stringent financial assurance requirements of Section 17 of the rules. There are numerous checks and balances for any, permitted, any new permitted mine. The financial assurance section should match the percent completion of the planned development such that if 20 percent of the mine was planned to be developed in the next five years, the financial assurance should be 20 percent of the overall reclamation costs plus 100 percent of the closure and post-closure monitoring costs plus contingency and allow some prorated salvage of equipment and capital. The Chapter 200 rules require open pit mines to have a one mile setback from various state and national parks, which seems reasonable to me. But they also require the same one mile setback from public reserve lands, various great ponds and rivers. Surface mines look a lot like quarries and gravel pits, yet quarries and gravel pits are not subject to even 10 percent of that one mile setback. This makes no sense that we do not apply, apply the same standard to quarry and gravel quit, pits. A 300 foot buffer for a mine should be sufficient in most settings. The Chapter 200 rules recognize that groundwater and surface water contamination above state and federal drinking water standards is often present around unmined metallic deposits, and that nat this natural condition has existed for thousands of years. These areas are frequently contaminated now and prior to any mining, and it will remain so long after any mine is opened, closed, so this 30-year closure requirement seems overly restrictive. Could I ask you to summarize in yep, fairness um, to others? Yep, my last sentence Great. or two. Thank you. Many environmental remediation sites, some I work on for state government, some I work on for federal government, are allowed to control treatment in much longer time frames, often as much as 100 years. So thank you for the ability to uh, provide my comment. Thank you for coming. Questions? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, R. Morrison. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, I'd like to say that uh, Shelley Mountain, Alice Bolstridge, Gail Maynard are the next three. Uh, then David Miller, Matt Streeter, Streeter and Roger David. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Morris. Good morning. Um, good morning. I was going to say good morning to Mr. Saviel, too. Thanks. We'll let him know. We'll tell yeah. him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, it's a real privilege to be here today. And um, I would uh, like to invite you to think a little bit further into the future than we have been just now. Um, I was wondering, uh, because Mr. Saviel is here, would you mind reading this? I've asked Mrs. Welch to read one of the definitions in the current um, proposed mining regulations. Um, I've been asked to read uh, benefic beneficiation. This is one sentence, mind you. Means the treatment of ore to liberate or concentrate its valuable constituents. Beneficiation includes, but it's not limited to, crushing, grinding, washing, dissolution, crystallization, filtration, sorting, sizing, drying, sintering, pelletizing, briquetting, calcining, roasting, and preparation for leaching to produce a final or intermediate product that does not undergo further benef beneficiation or processing, gravity concentration, magnetic separation, 
electrostatic separation, flotation, iron exchange, solvent exchange, electrowinning, precipitation, amalgamation, and dump that tank and in situ leaching. Thank you. Um, I had a lot of trouble understanding that particular issue. Um, specifically, it says something about intermediate products. My concern was that that and other um, definitions, which I will mention briefly, suggest that mining or mine treatment may take place at more than one location. And when we look at the definition of what a mining area is, we find that it is essentially undefined. So that's um, my principal point is I'd like you to think into the future a little bit further and, and what we are trying to accomplish today. Um, as many of you know, there are additional pro mining prospects throughout the state. And so if we start suggesting that a mining area doesn't have a specific delineation or is um, not contiguous, we open the door to some interesting possibilities. I'm thinking particularly of the lumber industry, which has a specific, or a, the pulp and paper industry, I should say, a specific mill, but they feed their mill from a great variety of sources. This is what I refer to as the tote road model. Um, Let's see, I've mentioned the, the, the definition for beneficiation, is that it? Anyway, that is, uh, because that suggests more than one process, processing facility, um, that's one of my um, uh, points. Um, I'd like to just to briefly mention the definition of groundwater which is water found beneath the surface except water completely upon the property of one person, not interconnected with other waters of the state. What does that mean? <laughs> what that means is that somebody wants to drill a deep well to inject um, contaminant, um, some kind of toxic contaminants. That would be the only way we could not um, mingle with other waters of the state if we get underneath them. So I would, I'm a little nervous about this, uh, um, some of the issues presented, and I've only just begun with the uh, definitions. One other point I would make, one other of the definitions was XX um, metal leaching. Um, as you probably all know, Gold is extracted and concentrated with some one of a variety of cyanide leach processes. Cyanide is not something that is um, something we have to be very careful of, and and um, so I think that there are many details in this and these proposed rules which are unspoken and which we should consider very carefully. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Um, questions? Yeah, quick one. Yes, Representative Shane. Oh, I've got a question. I haven't done that. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two quick things. Uh, we banned cyanide leaching already, so you're comfortable with us having done that. I thank you for doing that. Certainly. <laughs> Um, and the definition for groundwater, LL, is that out of the rules, or is, where did that come from? LL, groundwater. Yeah, where did it come from? It came oh. from the rules. Okay. LL, LL yeah. is the one right. of the I'm one just of looking paragraphs at the wrong page in the thanks. definitions. <laughs> May I? Um, yes. I, I have a, a question, Mr. Morrison. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Well, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, well, you're, you're doing you seem to have a, a very sophisticated understanding of uh, the subject you're testifying about. Could you tell me a little about your professional background? 
where did you learn so much about this subject? Uh, I, I'm still learning. Um, after the Korean War, I was uh, in the, I went to the University of Oregon, and um, I got two things out of the University of Oregon. I got a, a really remarkable woman and a degree. Um, the, came from British Columbia, which is north, not, it's not in Central America, it's down, it's, it's north of Seattle. And um, the degree was in geology. So the combination ended me up in British Columbia in a, in a mine, in a, in a processing facility in a mine. Um, Geologists mostly like to go out in the countryside and chip on rocks and see what they're made of. Most of us don't like to work in mines. We like to find mines, but we don't want to work in them. <laughs> um, so um, I, I had some early experience and ended up um, through a series of other experiences um, which included the Northern Rocky Mountains, both in this country and, and, and in Canada. And um, I had a number of maps, and I concluded that Maine was the place I wanted to end up after having significant experience in very spectacular countryside. And central Maine is a particularly attractive part of Maine because it's on the boundary between use of sophisticated people to the south and the rest of us to the north. And, and so we have the best of both possible worlds. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Best testimony ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Follow that. Shelly Mountain. Could I just say I may have misspoken um, we've got lists here, and I may have confused them, but the next are Alice Bostridge, Gail Maynard, Nancy Hathaway, Rivia McIntyre, and John McIntyre from Easton. So I'm sorry if I called some other names that were closer. We are trying to. And oh, uh, Representative Cooper, would you like to testify? Oh, good. All right. Well, after, go ahead. And oh, okay. Can you go after? Great. Thank you. Um, I'm testifying in opposition to LD 146. Uh, Representative Welch and members of the committee, my name is Shelley Mountain. I live in Mapleton in Arusta County. I'm originally from Portage, and I own a camp on the lake there. I am here, just as I was almost exactly one year ago, asking you to reject these exact same weak mining rules. Since I was here a year ago, there has been a major failure of the tailings pond at Mount Pauley Mine in British Columbia. I don't understand how anyone can watch that video of that and believe that any legislature should be considering weak mining rules like these ones. We should be strengthening environmental protections. I know that the claim is that modern technology will prevent any disasters. The Mount Pauley mine is one of those modern mines and technology did not pre prevent a disaster there. Even without a major disaster, these rules are not adequate to put to protect Maine's abundant natural resources that are currently providing ep economic and employment opportunities. I recently learned that sport fishing adds $36 million to the rustic economy annually. These rules do not clearly define or limit the amount of groundwater any mine will be allowed to contaminate. Contamina contaminated groundwater leaching into the Fish River chain would pose a very serious threat to the fishing and tourism industries. In the most recent election, the voters of Maine made it clear that we value our right to hunt and fish. I can't believe that the voters who voted that way would want this legislature to allow weak mining rules and powerful mining interests to ru ruin North Maine fisheries. The rules should make sure that there is sufficient amount of money put up by the mining company to ensure cleanup after any disaster. For example, Bald Mountain would not be mined by J.D. Irving and its vast resources. They have already set up another company, Aroostook Resources, to manage its mining operation, and Aroostook Resources could easily exhaust its finances 
leaving taxpayers responsible for cleanup. Not even Irving has enough money to treat the wastewater forever. The rules should not allow for per perpetual treatment. Any safe mine should be done with cleanup when the mining ends. Once the mine becomes purely a financial drain for the company, they will find ways, likely through bankruptcy, to end their responsibility for cleanup. Mining history is rich with examples. Rules should require the hiring of local labor and job retraining paid for by the mining company for when the mine closes. Please reject these weak rules so that when my children my children inherit my camp on Portage Lake, their children can fish it and swim in it. And also, I wish Representative Martin were here so that a roof stick can remain the way Maine used to be. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Miss Mountain? All right, thank you. Um, Representative Cooper. Thank you very much, uh, Chair uh, Welsh, for allowing me to come at the, out of order. I appreciate that. And uh, Senator Saviello and the rest of you on this. this oh my gosh, I forgot to bring a treat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm very That's clear. Right. I, I, I will. <laughs> Representative Cooper, I so you know. I will spend the weekend You're, making you're not the first the one. The penalty is two times. <laughs> two so, times, so okay. Just in the event, I think you may be in front of this committee again. Uh, probably. So not only do you owe us for that time, yes. but since the rules normally suspend at that point, yes. you're still in place. Okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm in uh, default. Yes, okay, thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, but you've had your fun for the day, I think, with that wonderful witness. Uh, I'm, I'm here today because I know some of you are new uh, to this committee, and I, I did want to share some of um, my experience with uh, listening to testimony that we had last, last uh, legislature on, on similar rules, or what I consider similar rules, and um, uh, highlight some of the things that I learned in, in that process. Um, First and foremost is the uh, recognition that Maine's climate makes mining uh, inherently risky. It's a wet climate. And many of the mines that uh, you will be uh, looking at uh, by way of comparison as to their safety and the rules uh, applicable are in dry climates. And since uh, 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 the safety of groundwater, the uh, uh, mixing of the um, the elements from the tailings into the uh, ground and hence to the groundwater is the key uh, risk of uh, this kind of mining. You have to keep that um, factor in uh, uh, your um, uh, forefront when considering whether these rules are tight enough. Um, I think they are not. Um, in the last legislature, we heard from a particularly compelling witness. Unfortunately, I've forgotten his name, but maybe some of you uh, do uh, remember it. He um, he testified for an entire um, uh, morning or afternoon using slides and, and um, uh, careful uh, scientific evidence. Pardon? Chambers. Chambers. Mr. Chambers. Dr. Chambers, I guess he was. And um, very objective. I mean, he, he was clear that he thought mining could be safe, but he was doubtful about whether that was uh, the case uh, here um, and uh, with the climate that we have. And I came away from his testimony feeling like he had presented a very fair and balanced view uh, leading to the conclusion that uh, mining rules have to be especially strict, not only in terms of uh, uh, containing contamination, but uh, in ensuring that the signif uh, su uh, sufficient financial uh, protections again, uh, for cleanup to protect tax taxpayers from having to be burdened by that in the long run. Finally, uh, there was much testimony about jobs. I mean, I, I think uh, it's clear that the impetus for uh, uh, wanting mining in uh, Bald Mountain and other areas of uh, uh, rural Maine is the creation of jobs. And some of those jobs are very good. Unfortunately, they're probably not going to go to Mainers because they require um, uh, technical expertise that because we haven't had mining in this state for a good uh, 
uh, 30 or 40 years uh, or more, uh, they, there just aren't such people uh, in our midst. There certainly will be some construction, you know, uh, kinds of jobs, but um, the jobs that will go to Mainers uh, are not particularly good, and the 700 employee figure is totally uh, out of the air. Uh, there have been other estimates that have been far lower. And no matter what number you choose to believe, uh, they're temporary jobs. I mean, the number, the amount of ore there will eventually be exhausted, uh, at least to the point where it's no longer commercially viable. So uh, we're talking at most seven to ten years of, uh, of jobs. It's not a permanent fix. Uh, for the county uh, or for the local community. It's a uh, short-term boost maybe uh, in the spending of employees there, but it's not long-term job creation at all. And you've got to compare this with uh, the clear um, economic driver of tourism in that part of the state, which depends on a pristine environment, which this uh, activity would definitely damage. So um, that is what I wanted to say, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for the good representative. So your assignment? Is to <laughs> spend the weekend cooking. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> no, wait till your bill comes up. And okay. Then you come back in, because I know you have at least I do, two. I, I do. I think you're one or two that the, um the uh, wipes, wipes and, and the uh, containers, and, I think. And the wa waste bags, yeah. yeah. So we we'll uh, look oh. forward to having cookies both times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all I can bake. Isn't so that so? That's it. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Representative. Thank you. Oh, Representative Campbell. Oh, no. We have a question. Oh, yeah. Representative Campbell. I'm sorry. Oh, you know. Oh. What do you mean? Oh, comment. Yes. Legislative update. I just got a call from uh, probably a member of the committee, Roger Reed, on the, uh, <laughs> on the interstate. And just south of the Carmel Winterport, exit 69 is 40 car pilot oh, oh. <clears throat> with a school bus and ambulances and the like. So, anybody headed north, you might want to consider getting off uh, at Edna Dixmont and go Route yeah. 2 around it. Thank you. That's why one reason we're trying to let the people from away go first. Yes. And the, those that don't know, our good friend Roger Reed is a, in the now Basketball Hall of Fame. Well deserved. All right, Alice. Alice Bostrich. Bostrich. Prescott. You got it. Oh, okay. Senator Sal Saviello, Representative Walsh, members of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee. I'm Alice Bostrich from Presque Isle. I want to thank whoever's responsible for that extra sheet of 150 mile. That's really important and helpful to us. Thanks. You're welcome. Good to know. Um, I'm also, I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of the uh, testimony, that, the wonderful testimony that I've been hearing here. I keep learning about this. I keep thinking I've got a handle on it. And then I hear more uh, things that I didn't know that confirms what I'm already uh, believing, I'm opposed to these rules because they're too weak to protect the environment. We need rules that are strong enough to protect the most environmentally risky sites, such as the proposed mining site at Bald Mountain, which contains unusually high levels of toxic chemicals that are now contained in the rock. These rules would allow mining companies unlimited release of arsenic, sulfuric acid, and other dangerous chemicals into the groundwater in the so-called mining area, which is so poorly defined in the rules that it could extend for, several, uh, for many miles. With these rules, open pit mining at this site would pollute a chain of rivers, streams, and lakes, which are some of the most pristine areas for brook trout in the United States. This site is likely even more dangerous than the one left by the Callahan Mine in Brooksville. And this year, more than 40 years after mine closing, the governor's budget requests $1.65 million over the next two years for the Callahan Mine Site Restoration Program. 
We need rules that will not allow such lengths of time to restore a site. I think 10 years is too long. I'm an old woman thinking about the legacy that I and my generation will leave for the future. My children and grandchildren enjoy fishing in the waters of the river chain downstream from, that, from Bald Mountain. These waters supply food, wholesome recreation, and direct knowledge and understanding of nature to many thousands of local people and tourists. Sports fishing contributes far more jobs and money to the local economy of, that mo of Bald Mountain than an open pit mine promises. These are su sustainable benefits that constitute a leg legacy that will continue in perpetuity if we keep our waters clean. <coughs> Ramsey Hart, a Canadian mining expert, says there's almost no way Bald Mountain can be mined without polluting nearby water for potentially thousands of years. Bald Mountain, just west of Portage Lake, my hometown, these rules would allow a mining company to ruin a sustainable, life-enhancing legacy for the sake of a temporary boost in J.D. Irving's corporate profits. Please, don't let that happen. Thank you for hearing this testimony. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Please be careful going home. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Gail Maynard. Gail Maynard. <laughs> Senator Saviello, Representative Welch, distinguished members of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee. Good morning. My name is Gail Maynard. I am an organic beef and grain producer from Riverstick County. My family operates Orchard Hill Farm in Woodland. I am here today to speak in opposition to LD 146. While my comments focus on Aristic County because that's where I live and have a business, my concerns would extend to wherever there are mineral deposits and mining interests throughout the state. As a farmer, I understand the importance of healthy soil, clean air, and water quality. I want strong mining rules to protect my family and my business. Weak mining rules allowing widespread groundwater contamination threaten the pristine aquifer underlying Bald Mountain and my home. Representative John Martin of Eagle Lake, uh, in a recent interview, said, quote, if we are going to survive here in northern Maine, we are going to have to utilize our natural resources, unquote. Well, I would agree with the representative and suggest <coughs> that county folks are currently doing just that through agriculture, forestry, wildlife management, and recreation. We need to leverage these sustainable efforts and build strong systems for economic development. To risk our precious natural resources with weak mining rules is unacceptable. Utilizing is not the same as using up. A recent Bangor News uh, main focus survey found that among the top five strategies for economic growth in our state was, quote, protect Maine's quality of place. This cannot happen anywhere in Maine without strong mining rules in place. Quality of place means in part protecting our air quality which is why strong mining rules must include ambient air quality monitoring during mine operation. The health of Maine workers and residents could be impaired by breathing toxic dust, but without monitoring, how will we know? Lastly, I am worried about allowing 30 years for mine reclamation and closure, and that taxpayers will be on the hook for those costs if companies go bankrupt. I want strong mining rules requiring companies to upfront the full cost. My Mainers need assurances that they will not be billed for any bailout. In closing, let me say that I am not anti-progress. I understand that change must come as we seek to resolve long-standing economic deficiencies. 
If there is a way to allow mining in our unspoiled wild areas, let it happen with the strongest industry regulations possible. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your testimony. And thank you for helping with some specifics. Questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank Please you. be careful going home. Uh, Nancy Hathaway. Is Nancy here? Do you know is Nancy? Room? Is she in the other room? Well, if you're in the other room, head over. So we'll go to McIntyre. I can't read the first name. Regina. 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 Regina McIntyre. I was going to say Reva, but that wouldn't get very far. Yeah. And after that, we'll go to Alan Clemens, Peter Crockett, and Steve Pinnett. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Regina McIntyre. Regina. I'm from Easton, which is not too far from Presque Isle. I'm originally from Germany, and I have lived here over 30 years in the state. And I am very concerned about what might happen to Northern Maine if, it, if we go to mining. Uh, I find to weaken the mining rules is totally unacceptable, because for one reason, we have plenty of pollution, air and water worldwide, and a lot of it is caused by mining. We do not need a our own private mining and envi environmental disaster in our backyard. Absolutely not. We need to tighten the rules, if anything. And I am really surprised that um, the Department of Environmental Protection is willing to lessen the rules, because the department is supposed to protect the environment and not protect uh, big corporations doing their mining. I find it rather short-sighted if we go ahead with the mining and we create a few jobs and in the long run have uh, all this uh, disaster and, and leaching of chemicals and poisons into the water and because that be going on for many, many, many years. So that's it. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me remind you, a couple seats up front if you guys want to take them. Uh, so if you would, come on up. So we're to Nancy Hathaway. Were you in the other room? Yes. Good. Thank you for doing that. On the same with those hiding in the foyer, there's still a couple seats out here. I don't want the doors blocked, so there's one seat, one seat. It's like church. <laughs> so come on in and sit down. There are one, two, three seats available. Three seats available. So there's another seat available. And then you're Mr. McIntyre? You'll be next after her. Okay, so you stay right where you are. All right, please. Nancy uh, Senator Thomas Saviello uh, and members of the Environmental Natural Resources Committee. Uh, my name is Nancy Hathaway. I grew up in Gardner and I, uh, 10 generations Maine, and I now live on, in Surrey on the Blue Hill Peninsula. <clears throat> I care about Maine like you do. I left Maine as a teenager for college and work, and after decades, I found my way back. Jobs in Maine are important, but not these jobs. Living now on the Blue Hill Peninsula for 14 years, I'm aware of a mine that was closed 40 years ago. Um, <clears throat> and I lost track. Um, that Maine people and the federal government are continuing to pay millions and clean up. Governor LePage's budget includes a request for over um, a million and a half dollars for the next two years from the general fund for the Callahan Mine Site Restoration Program. So let us not invite in environmental disasters. Let us invite in jobs that bring health to Maine land and Maine people. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Good yeah. questions. Thank you for coming down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now Mr. McIntyre. I'm the other half of that uh, partnership that we have with the McIntyres. Okay? Welcome. And uh, I, we live in Easton. We've lived uh, in Maine since 1973. Uh, I adopted Maine in 73 as opposed to what many of you were born here and possibly take things for granted that exist here, especially the national, uh, natural environment that we have. So. Having said that, um, the attraction to Arista County is that it is perhaps the least polluted 
county of, of the whole country, in my uh, estimation. That's perhaps an exaggeration, but it's something that would stand some, um, I think, um, hold with many people. Now, I don't really have anything to say other than that I am vehemently opposed to LD146, vehemently opposed to it. Uh, I've seen the copper mines uh, out west. I'm originally from the west anyway. But um, I've seen that one uh, copper mine that's out there. Great location to have a copper mine. It does not, it's an arid climate. I mean, it's uh, in the desert where that thing is. And uh, so they don't have the issues that we have as far as uh, wet climate. Uh, we have an, a climate that's constantly changing and I think it's because of climate change. It's uh, an element that's playing in it. Every, when we moved here, they didn't have doves that were landing in our bird feeders. We have doves that are landing in our bird feeders, and we're finding you know, the turkeys are coming up all this. So there's, there's climate change. The extremes, we have tornado uh, warnings in Arusta County. Good grief, I, if that happened in 73, I don't know if I would have come here. <laughs> but. Anyway, I just like to close with one thing that uh, caught my uh, caught my uh, eye in readings of uh, environmental issues, and that was simply this: that um, we don't own the land; we simply have borrowed it from our children. That's it. Thank okay. you. Questions? Thank you very much. Please be careful going home. Now we're to, I think it's Clements. Alan Clements. Clements, Alan Clements. Hi, good morning. Uh, uh, just like to thank the members of the committee and chairs, Savio and Welch, for giving me the opportunity to address you this morning. My name is Alan Burroughs Clements. Um, I, I mentioned my middle name because I'm the owner of Burroughs Machine Tool Products, a machine shop in Charleston. And uh, People often ask me where the, the name came from. It's not part of my name, but it is part of my name. Um, I just want to, um, well, I, I want to mention, I, I sent uh, all of you an email last night. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to uh, make it down here today or not. Um, so I, I put a, made a couple little changes. It was late, and uh, we always uh, like to edit things, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to basically read the email I, I sent last night. Um, I just want to voice my grave concern about the ability of the proposed mining regulations to, pre to prevent another mining disaster in our state. Given both the high sulfide levels of the most productive ore deposits in Maine and the high precipitation levels of our region and its associated hydrology, business as usual relative to metallic mineral extraction will have a predictable negative outcome. We have enough hands-on experience in Maine to be aware of this with certainty. I work in industry, I work with many metals, and I fully understand the necessity of mining. But when predictable negative and irreversible outcomes are so obvious, I must voice my plea for courage and responsibility within these efforts and attempts to get Maine's metallic resources into the, into the marketplace. And I ask you to please vote to reject this bill. Thank you. Question? Question. Senator Breen. Thank you for coming. Um, as a, a professional who uh, works in the, with metals, and you said you, know, you understand their value in the economy and that sort of thing, you're, I'm, I'm interested in your opinion about the, um, the perspective that Mainers use metal, that we consume metal, and that um, as part of that cycle of consumption, if we have the potential to produce it, that we should. Because um, that's something I've heard as this, this uh, topic has come up. And sure. I'm just interested uh, in your perspective on that. Well, I, th I think probably three things. Uh, first is that the, the, the dominant ore reserves that we have here are very high in sulfides, not just Bald Mountain. But it's pretty much that's the general rule here in Maine. that. Uh, our deposits are not of the caliber that they are, uh, you know, relative to the, the complications of mining that, that they are elsewhere in the world. Um, so that's, that's one thing. The other thing is that we're a wet climate, as other people have mentioned. Uh, we, we're really a wet climate, and it looks like 
according to the testimony I've heard so far today, we're, we're getting wetter, not, not the other way around. And probably the third thing is, is that um, in all places where mining takes place, there's, there needs to be a, a certain local responsibility. And in, in our situation here, it's like, well, this is our turn. So it's not to say, not to minimize, that there are abuses all over the world. And we, I think we all are aware generally that, there's, that, that mining is a difficult in, industry, to put it nicely, you know, and that there are abuses other places. And it would be great if, uh, if places in the rest of the world did things right, but we don't have control over that. We, we're in our jurisdiction, and our responsibility, and the, the, the responsibility I would suggest to this committee at this point in time is that we need to exercise our responsibility within the jurisdiction we're in. So that's, that's why I'm here, you know. Um, I, again, yeah, I'll, I'll really emphasize, I, I love working with metal. It's, a great, it's great stuff. You know, you know I don't, <laughs> we all know that, but it, 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 it's crucial. And even within renewable resources, using renewable energy and so on, things like aluminum, which is not here in Maine, but copper, for example, these are, these are metals, and I work with these in, in some renewable power industries. These are metals that are crucially important. You know, even if we drive, you know, our Prius and whatever we do, the, the, the best things we, we can, uh, you know, metal has to come from somewhere. And in our case, again, we're in the jurisdiction, and the, the question is before us in our jurisdiction. And if we look around at the specifics, sulfides particularly, and the amount of precipitation, we're just, we're, we're setting ourselves up for big problems. So I, I'm not going to repeat everybody else's comments, but I would like to echo them. Sure. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, um, Peter, Peter Crockett. Okay, so we've got Peter Crockett. Next up is uh, Steve Panette, uh, Sarah. Chance, eh? Chance. Not, or Luck. Lock oh, La, La Chance? Oh, maybe it's La Chance. Bob Klotz and Hillary Lister. So, Peter, you're up. Oh, thank you. Uh, Peter Crockett from Argyle Township. I also work strictly with metals, uh, not being a machinist, I'm a welder and metal fabricator, a uh, lifelong Mainer. Uh, it's easy to forget how privileged we are to live in such a wonderful, healthy world as we do here in Maine. It's easy to take our healthy way of life for granted when we are constantly surrounded by fresh, fragrant air carrying a delightful scent of whatever blossoms happen to be blooming at the time. Surrounded by lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans absolutely filled with abundant, thriving life, in every, every form we are aware of. It is not until we venture away from our paradise and cross that big green bridge in Kittery and head south into the belly of the beast where we find more industry than forest, more asphalt than open earth, more exhaust pipes and smokestacks than there are trees. It's not until we travel through this industrial wasteland of toxic byproducts and poisons which covers thousands and thousands of square miles. It is not until we experience this with our own eyes when we realize what a precious and rare gem we hold here in Maine. There are many who look upon this natural beauty which sustains us all as nothing more than a commodity to be consumed for profit, as is the case in much of the rest of the world. I look upon this natural beauty as an integral part of a healthy life in physical, emotional, and spiritual sense. It is what sustains me. A hundred years ago, the majority of our entire planet was very similar to what we still have and cherish here in Maine. In the time since the Industrial Revolution had begun, mankind has viewed our precious world as nothing more than means to create wealth for a very few. While they manipulate the system in order to shift the cost of this destructive behavior to, to others, specifically you and I as taxpayers. Our clean air and water here in Maine becomes more rare and more valuable as each day passes. If we allow this wanton destruction of our irreplaceable and relatively unspoiled natural resources, it will be gone forever, never to be seen again. The act of creating mining laws which would permit the permanent destruction and degradation of our water and air will be the beginning of the end of Maine, the way life should be. 
Maine can be a gleaming example of how to do things right and protect that which sustains us all. Or it can simply be another toxic wasteland created for a profit to the few at the expense to every living thing. I've made my decision, now it's time for the board to make yours. I love Maine with an unbridled passion. I love what my country is supposed to be. All that is required for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. Maine, the way life should be. We should be concerned with keeping it that way. Thank you. Representative Duchesne. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Peter is my constituent, so I'm going to mess with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lord right knows he messes with me. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, you, you don't object if I send you a copy of the rules and then bounce some ideas off you? Oh, certainly. Excellent. Count on it. You've got my contact information. Yeah. Uh, other questions? I want to use sim uh, Senator Breen's kind of question similar. You said you're in welding? Yes. So that's where good. do your metal rods come from? Well, a mine ultimately in a chemical plant through a distributor. And where's uh, the metal come from for those rods? From an ore. Okay. That's good. You answered my question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> all right. And if not, thank you. Thanks very much for coming. We're all set? Yeah. <laughs> Steve Panette. And then we're to Bob Clotes. Uh, and Sarah Lachance, I think it's Sarah Lachance, and Hillary Lister. And then to John Diefenbacher Crow, and to Sherry, I think it's Sherry Farrell. Good morning, um, Representative Welch. Yeah, just uh, one second before you do. Uh, if you have testimony, make sure you give it to uh, Tyler so he can hand it out for us, please. And we'd like to get 20 copies. And remember, there's still a comment period after that you can still submit information. We welcome that. And also, so everybody in the audience, I'm sure you're worried about this, but we are going to break at noontime, and we're going to come back in at about quarter to one. So we've had de debates about this in the past. We will not work through lunch. We're going to go take a break, get a breather, get something to eat. But we will, I promise you, start promptly at quarter to one. It's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Senator Welch, um, Representative Welch, Senator Saviello, members of the committee. My name is Steve Panette, and I'm a resident of Scarborough. I, I'm a consulting hydrogeologist, and in a prior life I was involved with the development of the Maine mining rules, the 1991 rules, while I was with the Maine DEP. Based on science and my knowledge of public and environmental policy, I believe the proposed regulation is very rigorous and will protect Maine's natural resources if properly implemented. I'm also submitting an electronic copy of the proposed rules with my detailed annotations. I've sent you, uh, sent you this. This is a hard copy. And I'm convinced that the pros rules are much more protective than the rules they seek to replace. I guess I'm in the mi minority. Uh, my testimony is going to be less uh, colorful than what you've seen previously. Um, my written comments focus on six points, and I offer recommendations regarding the proposed regulations. Um, for the copy you have, my um, the existing language of the regulations is in black. My comments are in blue and where there's a highlight uh, as a concern of my um, comment. Uh, the first addresses the definition of an aquifer. Um, I won't read the definition, but um, an aquifer generally is defined by as consisting significant amounts of recoverable groundwater, and that applies to sand and gravel aquifers. Uh, you know, they generally yield 10, more than 10 gallons a minute to a uh, properly constructed well. There's no definition of that for bedrock, so I think no definition of statute for, uh, for bedrock, and so I think you ought to address that in your comments to the main DEP. Um, and I also don't think that you ought to relegate the main geologic survey as a quasi-environmental setting standards agencies, which is what you're doing with the statute, with this particular definition of, of aquifer, because they'll have to define what significant quantities of groundwater are. Um, also, my second comment pertains to the definition of groundwater um, in subchapter 1, general provisions, um, section 2, QQ. Um, groundwater means all waters beneath the surface of the earth. And um, the highlighted section is except such waters as con are confined and retained completely upon the property of one person and do not drain onto the 
or connect with any other waters of the state. That really doesn't exist in Maine in reality unless uh, until you get so deep that you're out of groundwater. So really, that's that that shouldn't be there. It's an it's an existing statute in in the definition of groundwater. Other uh, regulations. Um, it was in the 1991 regulations, and I think it's causing a lot of problems for people. It really shouldn't be there. It doesn't exist. It's not Mr. real. Panet, would you, uh, since your time is up, would you continue to discuss with us your other six bullet points that you have in here? Thank I would you. Appreciate I'm sorry, it. I totally, it. totally right. ignored Just the clock. Keep it, keep it. If you can brief them as yes, best you I can. Yes, I will. Also. The fact that we have them in writing is very helpful. helpful. So okay. maybe if you could just highlight sure. um, those. The other trip point, I think, with these regulations for for the mining opponents and maybe some others is the definition of a mining area. And the mining area, I mean, it could be large, it could be small, it could be many small areas. And I think you need to um, request that you define mining operable units. I, I, I label them MOUs. So you would have a mining extraction area, an ore extraction area. The processing area could be contiguous to that area or it could be elsewhere. The, you know, the, the tailings disposal area could be elsewhere also. So I, I think if at the discretion of the DEP, you may give them the option that they can subdivide these and have uh, monitoring and uh, other enforcement compliance requirements for each one of these areas. For example, the vehicle maintenance or the equipment maintenance area may be you know, 10 miles off. It doesn't need the same monitoring requirements and uh, compliance requirements as the or processing area. So uh, I think that that would be key. My fourth point pertains to the, uh, the cost, detailed cost estimate. Uh, somebody pointed out earlier, you, um, you require uh, a detailed cost estimate uh, for conducting treatment activities for a minimum of 100 years. Um, you know, people, you, people are saying, well, 10 years post closure is too much, 30 years post closure is too much. Obviously 100 years is, is way out of, of uh, concern, so why burden the applicant with crafting these cost estimates for you know, 100 years where you know, it's going to be purely conjecture at that point what the cost would be. My uh, sixth item is the uh, dust one. Actually, my fifth item is the financial assurance for Group C wastes. Um, group C wastes are really quarry rock that you would use as aggregate for roads and driveways and whatnot. Um, DEP is allowing you, the applicant, to use them in the road. So why should you create a financial assurance mechanism that covers group C, C waste? It's, it's, not a, it's not a waste, it's a resource. Uh, so I, I recommend you request that that be removed. Um, item six pertains to the dust monitoring standards. Um, the the uh, mining safety and health agency, which I'll refer to, uh, administration, which I'll refer to as MISHA, has very strict um, fugitive dust uh, standards that are measurable with calibrated equipment and so on. In this regula uh, in this part of the regulation, you're saying that uh, visible emissions from fugitive dust sources may not exceed a passage. <coughs> Uh, concentrations of 20 percent that's a very subjective I mean that's essentially your eye your calibrated eyeball saying okay there's 20 percent dust here y you have federal and state standards that can where you can measure and govern dust emissions so I, I think you should defer to those standards that concludes my comments I'll, thank you for uh, answering my question and I certainly will help others that add need that flexibility as we get to the end of their testimony any questions from Mr. Panet? Representative Campbell. Thank you. I guess uh, this has been very helpful. Thank you. Uh, but uh, after sitting through the last process and being faced with something similar, if we were to, to oppose and uh, move out not to pass these rules, um, having been in the process before, what would, what's your perspective on what we'd be left with? to make these modifications that I'm recommending, or, or what? Well, we're hearing a lot of testimony just to simply uh, deny the, the process of these rules, simply oppose okay. and not pass out. 
uh, these have been very helpful um, and certainly will be taken into consideration. But what's your perspective on if we were to simply ought not to pass this bill? I, th I think you'd be left with the existing regulations, which um, have a few discrepancies with the existing statutes, but the existing regulation, the existing mining regulations are very robust in, them in and of themselves and I think would be sufficient to move forward. I think these are, you know, they're not an order of magnitude better, but they're, they're you know, they're a little better, a little more stringent. Um, you have more modeling that's required, more risk analysis. You have the third party uh, inspection uh, for compliance, for construction, for at all phases. Um, and that's not that third party person is, or entity is not paid for by the or allied with the the mining applicants. So I think you have a you have some compliance um, and quality assurance mechanisms that are not I think as as robust in the uh, past in the 1991 regulations. But I think you could mine with the existing regulations. You just have to maybe tweak the statute to be consistent with the regulations. Uh, for example, the, uh, the current statute, the proposed statute requires two years of, of uh, background monitoring. The old statutes require one year. Um, I don't know that two years is a magical number. It, uh, it, it may be better statistically, but I don't think it's really going to determine whether the mine complies or does not comply with the regulations. It's, you know, it's just easier to comply. Representative Shea. Yes, thank you, Senator. I think what you were just saying is a little inconsistent from what we hear the buzz in the public saying. That is that uh, the buzz is that uh, the current rules that we're being asked to reject are less stringent, are, are relaxed. And it sounds like you're saying they've actually made some improvements over the previous Yeah, I've regime. detailed it here. I submitted this to Senator Saviello last year. Um, I've uh, tweaked some spelling uh, <laughs> errors, but they were basically the same as what was submitted last year. Um, I think if you read what I've, my comparison, you'll find that they're, they're actually a lot more robust and the compliance is a lot more rigorous. Who's got um, it? Because I'd so love to see it. I, 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 I guess okay, I, I, I've got this copy right here. I'll give it to you. Um, I guess I would urge everybody to testify. <laughs> thinks they're going to testify to read the regulations in detail and understand them. Questions? Dustin, uh, Representative White. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, to follow up with uh, Representative DeShane, uh, basically what you're saying is what's coming before us, in your opinion, um, is to accept or reject these rules. If we reject them, we're going to still go back to the rules that were in place before. And in your personal opinion, you believe that the rules that are before us now are more safe and environmentally friendly and protective of our environment versus what was in place beforehand, which would what we'd be left with. I do. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Pinnett. Okay. Sarah? Is it Lachance? Okay. All right. Well, she'll, when she comes, let us wave her hand. Bob, K-L-O-T-Z? <coughs> Now, so you know, I don't want people standing.